Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Worship in the Word. I'm Pastor Keith Lee, pastor here at Life Center Church, and I'm glad that you chose to join us here on tonight. I want to take a minute and do a plug for vote.org. I want you to make sure that you are registered. Make sure your family's registered. One of you in the household, take the lead. Make sure you are registered. Take the lead. Go over your ballot. Know your ballot from top to bottom. Know who's running for what. Know what propositions are there, what they mean, and what that means for you and your family and your community. So I want you to do that. Go to vote. Dot org. Make sure you're registered. You can also track your ballot. Make sure that they've sent it to you. And if you're going to mail it in, make sure you track it to make sure that it's counted. But your vote does count. Someone said to me this morning, uh, I'm not voting. My vote doesn't count. That's not true. Your vote does count. All right. Especially on your local level. Uh, where, where it really impacts you, where it really impacts you. So make sure you are registered to vote. Make sure that your family's registered to vote, all those that are eligible, and make sure that you track your ballot. All right, grab your Bibles. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10 through 18. We're continuing talking about spiritual warfare. And I want you to, uh, while you're finding that, I want you to be ambidextrous and I want you to find it with one hand and with your other hand, I want you to invite somebody to Bible study with you on tonight. Invite somebody with you to Bible study, hit that share button, start a watch party, and let's, uh, let's gather together for Bible study. All right, all right, it is Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. Come on, repeat after me. I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I hear. But I'm moved by what I believe, and I believe the word of God. The victory is mine. I have it now, and I can see it through my eyes of faith. We thank God for that. Come on, Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of, dark, of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you bless this word on tonight. Bless those that are hearers, those that are, that are tuning in tonight. We pray that you go into each home, speak to us, and continue to pre prepare us for the battle that we fight in the spiritual realm. We pray for our nation. We pray for your people. We pray for our communities. We pray for the injustices in the world. Father, show your hand strong. Show your hand mighty. Father, for those, Lord God, that are hurting during this pandemic, show yourself a healer and a provider. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we're talking about the armor of God. We're talking about the armor of God. And uh, let's, let's review, for those of you who maybe didn't tune in, uh, have not tuned in to the last couple of weeks, for the last few weeks we've been here in Ephesians chapter number 6. And the armor of God, every believer must be properly equipped if they're going to engage in the battle. You have to realize that we are in a spiritual warfare. We are in a spiritual warfare all the time. From the time that you wake up to the time that you lie down, you are in a spiritual warfare. And I would dare to say, even from the time that you lay down to the time that you wake up, the enemy will mess with your mind through dreams and through other things. And so all the day, all the day long, 24 hours a day, there is a battle in the spiritual realm that we have to be ready for. And so what we've done, we, we, we've reviewed, we, we, we've gotten down to uh, verse number, 
uh, verse number 17 now. I think we're in verse number 17 now where we're taking on the helmet of salvation. But let's review what we've put on already. We've put on the, the we've girded ourselves with the belt of truth, all right? Truth is the thing that everything hangs on. The belt, uh, your sword and your, your shield and everything hangs on that belt that went around the soldier's waist. And so truth is the thing that it all hinges on. You have to be honest. You have to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest with people. And you have to be honest with God. Those are the things that we have to do in order to, in, in order to just set the foundation. We have to be honest. Honest on that belt, on that truth, we have the breastplate of righteousness. Everything that gives and sustains life is protected by this. The breastplate protects the heart, it protects all the vital organs. Righteousness protects us. All right, righteousness protects me, it protects us. All right, then we have our feet with the gospel of peace, your strength to battle the enemy. Is, is, your, is right in line with your ability to stand firm on the gospel. Without your feet being protected, without the gospel peace, without your feet being protected, you cannot run, you cannot fight, you cannot flee, you cannot attack. You've got to have the gospel of peace. And then last week we ended talking about the shield of faith. Faith is the root of every believer's victory. All right, let me say that again. Faith is the root of every believer's victory, all right? And so now this week, he tells us, he says, you've got to put on the helmet of salvation. The helmet of salvation. You've got to, the Bible tells us, to guard your heart and your mind. You've got to put on the helmet of salvation. What you know or don't know about God will ultimately determine what kind of disciple you will be, all right? It is, it is important that you protect your mind. What you know or don't know about God will ultimately determine what kind of disciple you will be. You cannot be discipled in an area that you don't know, that you are not, that are, are not. You cannot be a real disciple. In other words, let me, let me take that back. You must be discipled in areas that you don't know. When we don't know something, we cannot walk according to what we know. We are expected by God to walk according to what we know, but if we don't gain the knowledge, if we don't gain the, 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 the word of God, the knowledge of God, if we don't understand and we don't, we don't gain the knowledge of him, then we cannot uh, be the disciple that he is calling us to be. And so I hold on to my salvation by what I know. I hold on to my salvation. I hold on to where God has me by what I know. You remember when Jesus, when the Bible says that the Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness and the devil came to tempt him. Jesus did not fight the enemy with his feelings. Jesus did not fight the enemy with his emotions. Jesus did not fight the enemy by just having a fit, but he turned to the enemy and he put the word of God. What he knew, what he knew the word said, he was able to use it to fight the enemy. And just like Jesus, if you are going to fight the enemy, you have to know what the word of God says. What you know will determine the, your capacity as a disciple. Genesis chapter number three. Genesis chapter number three, beginning at verse number one. Genesis three and one. The Bible says, now the certain serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did you really say you must, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? All right, so He's, what, are we, what is the enemy, the, the serpent, what is he doing? He is talking to the woman, and he wants to know what she knows about what God said. Watch this. He wants to see what she knows about what God said. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree 
that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. Remember, I told you what you know or don't know will ultimately determine what kind of disciple you will be, what kind of follower you will be. Here's what happens. God does not tell them, them not to touch it. When the enemy sees that she is not certain of the what the word really says, he says, I've got an in. I've got an inside track because she does it know. You cannot add to God's word. You cannot take away from God's word. God's word is God's word. He says, but... But God did say you must not eat of the fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden or you must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. Now, you will not surely die. You will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He appeals to her her, 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 her lust for her, or her, her desire to be more. We all have a desire to be more. We all have a desire to want to be uh, great. We all have a desire to want to be powerful. We all have that desire, and he appeals to that just like he appealed to Jesus. He took Jesus up on the mountain. He says, look, I will give you everything. The pride of life. I will give you everything. But Jesus put the word on him. Jesus put the word, word on him. She ha doesn't have a good grasp of the word of God and what God's expectations of are. Therefore, the enemy has an end. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Now watch this. What the enemy does is changes her perception of the, of the fruit. Watch this. They had been tending to the garden. They had been tending to the garden all this time. But when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food, he changed her perception. She had never considered that before. She had never considered it in that way. He changed her perception. What you know and what you don't know will determine what kind of disciple you will be. You can't let the enemy change your perception of what you know about the word of God. You can't let the enemy change your perception about what you know about who God is. You can't let the enemy change your perception. The Bible says when they ate, then the eyes of them both were what? Opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. I hold on to my salvation. I hold on by what I know about my salvation. You have to take, so if that is the case, you have to take the time to know. You have to take the time to know. How often do you open your Bible when I'm not telling you to turn to a text? How often do you read your Bible when you are not in some type of service setting? How often do you read uh, your word and, and get the word of God in you when you are not in church? Do you open your Bible and read it? Because what you know, it's you got to take time to know the word. You have to take time to know your Bible. You have to take time to know what the word of God says because it is the word of God that's going to keep me. It is the word of God that's going to sustain me. It is the word of God that lets me know what God wants and what I can expect. It is the word of God. So you have to have his word. It is his word. It is his word. It is his word. I don't know. Oh, my God. Ooh, I feel. It is his word. You have to understand that the word of God, it, 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 it sustains, it holds, it strengthens, it, 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 it holds your faith. Listen, why? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith, it sustains you. The word of God. You got to know. You got to know the word. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15. Watch. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly does what? Handles 
the word of truth. You have to do your best to know. You got to do your best to know. You got to do your best to know. Pastor, why do you keep saying that? Because I want you to understand, you're going to have to make a consorted, a concerted effort to know God's word. You're going to have to make a concerted effort to know what the Bible says so that when the enemy comes, you will be able to withstand him with the word of God. You be able to with, with my kids. I tell them all the time. I said, if some, if you know what I said, when someone comes and tells you something, you tell them, well, my mom said I can, or my dad said I can. And that supersedes everything. When you know what the Bible says, it doesn't matter what people say. It doesn't matter what the enemy says. You can open up your mouth and you can speak directly to it and say, no, but the word says I can. So the helmet of salvation. Next, he says that we have to have the sword of the spirit. This is the only part of the armor that is an offensive weapon. Everything else has been about attacking, the, uh, stopping the attack, stopping the attack. He says, but you got to have the sword of the spirit. What is the sword? The sword is the word of God again. It's the word of God. You got to know the word so that you can use it, use the word as a sword. You got to stop playing the victim. Stop being the prey and fight back. Somebody just type, I'm not a victim. Stop playing the victim and start fighting back. Start using the word. Will you stop, stop, use, start using the word to, to fight against what the enemy wants to do. Jesus didn't cower. Jesus didn't play the victim. Jesus didn't say, oh, I'm hungry. I can't do this. He brought out the word of God and he beat the devil back. Defeated the enemy by simply declaring it is written. He defeated the enemy by simply uttering the word it is written. And he began to utter and, and, and re-articulate re the word of God. When you can tell the enemy, I know what you're trying to say to me. I know what you're trying to do to me. But it is written. Woo. It is written. It is written. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. It is written that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. It is written that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It is written. And because it is written, it is so. Hebrews chapter 4. When you realize that you don't need all kind of hocus pocus. You don't need all kind. God's word is enough to fight back the enemy. Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12. The Bible says, for the word of God is living and active. You need to highlight that right there. The word of God is living and active. The word of God is alive and it is active. It's actionable. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing the soul and the spirit. Joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. Listen, the better you know the word of God, the easier it will be to detect Satan's lies and reject his offers. Eve's problem, she didn't know the word well enough to know that the enemy was lying and to reject the offer. She added to what God said. She wasn't certain. And some of us, we, we want to just come across as if we know what the word says. So we will say, well, we'll, we'll paraphrase or we'll, you know, it's, it's, it's good to have a concept. And I may not know the address, but you better understand what it says. Because when you don't understand what it says, you will not detect the lies of the enemy and you will not be able to reject his offer. The reason she didn't reject his offer because he was able to manipulate her insecurity in what she knew. You've got to know the word of God. 
So this is it. Put on the whole armor of God. And I'm going to tell you how you can do that. There may be somebody out there listening today that says, I don't know how to, all this stuff, pastor, all these different, how do I put on the full armor of God? You can put on the full armor of God when you put on Jesus. Put on Jesus and you'll be putting on the full armor of God. What are you talking about, pastor? Put on Jesus. Remember, the first thing you put on, you got to gird yourself with the truth. John 14 and 6 you got to gird yourself with the truth. John 14 and 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Put on Jesus. you got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Put on Jesus. you got to put on, you got to charge your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Ephesians 2, 14. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. Put on Jesus. You got to put on, the, you got to take up the shield of faith. You got to take up his faithfulness made it possible. Galatians 2 and 20, I have been crucified with Christ. And I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself. Put on Jesus. You got to put on the helmet of salvation. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 9, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to what? Receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. You got to put on Jesus. You got to take up the sword of the Spirit. The word, which is the word of God, St. John 1 and 1. Uh, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 14, and that word became flesh and dwelt among us. We, having seen the glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. You got to put on Jesus. You got to put on Jesus. My last scripture, Romans 13. Verse number 12, the Bible says the night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently and in, in daytime as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Put on Jesus. How do I put on Jesus? For as many as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. I want to invite you, even during this time of pandemic, we can make it happen. If you have not been baptized into Christ, I want to invite you. Some of you have been watching, some of you have been following, and you've been silently following, but today you got to make a choice. Today, you got to make a decision. Today, you've got to contact me and say, Pastor, I'm ready and we will baptize you. We will make it happen. We can do touchless baptisms. We can do it. We can do it. We can, we can take you and we can meet. We can social distance and we can still get you into the, you can still put on Jesus during the pandemic. You can still put on Jesus during COVID. You can still put on Jesus with social distance. You can still put on Jesus. I want you to put on Jesus. Put on the full armor of God. You've got to reach out to me right now. You've got to reach out to me right now and say, Pastor, I'm ready to put it on. You've got to. Because if you don't have on the full armor, if you haven't put on Jesus, you're not ready to fight this spiritual warfare. You're not ready to fight against the enemy until you're fully armed. I want you to put on Jesus. I want you to call me. I want you to inbox the church. I want you to call the number 909-653-2484.
email us, info at mylifecenterchurch.com. Inbox us right here on social media and say, I'm ready to put on Jesus. That's all you have to say. We'll get back to you in a hurry. And we will get, we will, I will come and I will baptize you. You that have been watching. So many of you have been watching. So many of you have been tuning in and you've been silent and you're not commenting. You're, not, you're just silently receiving the word of God. But it's causing you and it's pricking your heart and it's making you realize you've got to make a choice even during these times. If I'm talking to you, don't hesitate. Send the message now. Send the message now. Napoleon Hill said, victory is always possible for the person who refuses to stop fighting. You can't quit. You can't give up where you are. You Got to put on Jesus and keep fighting. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, my brother and my sister, I know that you have spoken to them. I know that you have heard. They have heard you. And Father, as they respond quickly to your word, as they respond to hearing what you have said, as they say, what must I do? Father, I pray your healing and your virtue and your salvation on them. Father, the one today that doesn't know you, I pray that they accept you. I pray that they ask you to come into their heart. I pray that they ask you to be their savior, ask you to forgive their sins and say, Lord, I believe in what you did on the cross. And Father, I pray that they will send that inbox, send that message to say, I'm ready to put on Jesus. We'll thank you for the souls that are coming. We thank you for the souls that you're sending. We thank you for those, Lord God, that are going to accept you through this message. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Listen, last thing I want you to do. I want you to share this with somebody. Not just on your timeline. Why don't you send it to their inbox? Why don't you, why don't you send it in their email? Send it somewhere where they know that you're just not trying to, to, to just share it with everybody, but you specifically thought about them. God wants to do something powerful in your life and in the lives of people that you know through this word tonight. Let him use you as a conduit to get this word to them. God bless you. Come back on Sunday. We'll see you here. We'll continue to talk about keys to, uh, to being empowered, keys to living an empowered life. Just come back on Sunday and meet us here. We'll see you soon. God bless you. We love you.